You say Mr. Mitchell signed off on it. Do you mean physically initialed it or no, signed sir. it? I mean said we'll give Mr. Liddy the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And he and identified no he identified the targets. Did that include the Democratic National Committee headquarters yes, at sir. the Watergate? Yes, sir. Did he do that with a pencil? He may have. He wrote some things on the documents. I cannot specifically recall what he wrote on the documents because I destroyed the documents. But, but is there any doubt in your mind that the plan was agreed to by Mr. Mitchell? No, sir. There was no doubt. Mitchell and Magruder gave opposing testimony, which each explained in a different way. Well, we've had this testimony on the road before this committee. It was respect well, by to all, this, three, all three witnesses. all three people that were involved. If there is a problem there, it's a problem of misunderstanding or a contravention of my orders. Did you ever tell Mr. Mitchell before you made your full truthful disclosure that you were going to have to, to tell the truth? Yes, sir. And what was his response? He indicated to me that it would not he would not be able to go that way and that he would have to go the other way and I said I understood and he said he understood my position and he wished me luck and I wished him luck. Whoever approved the plan, break-ins, more than one, were made into the Watergate headquarters of the Democratic National Committee. The first had gone undetected. It occurred while Richard Nixon was in Russia, in Moscow, negotiating to taunt Another triumph of the Nixon foreign policy. But the break-in on June 17, 1972, was detected, and soon the burglars were in handcuffs on their way to jail. Months after their arrest, they had been charged and convicted of a break-in, but still they had not talked, and senators were curious about what kind of men they were. The committee was surprised to find that the burglars thought of themselves as heroes and patriots. And in fact, their leader, Hunt, had a long career of faithful service to his country. Why on earth, after a record of that type, would you get involved in clandestine activities and commit a series of felonies? <clears throat> and having spent 21 years in CIA following orders without question and a, prior, and a prior five years with the armed services following orders without question, it never occurred to me to question the, if you will, the legality, the propriety of anything that might be ordered by uh, the Attorney General of the United States. Is it your testimony that you thought that all of these acts there on June the 17th were legal? It's my testimony, sir, if I may repeat uh, a portion of it, that the Attorney General had the authority to authorize it. It was my experience that he did, in fact, authorize wiretapping and other related activity that were within his purview. How did you think you could liberate Cuba by participating in a burglary in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> if we helped Mr. Hunt and this government in matters which I will further add I believed in, it would establish a situation in which besides the right that the Cuban people have to be free and independent, it would establish us as having aided this government in this mission. You had served with E. Howard Hunt at the Bay of Pigs. That is correct, sir. He had been your superior. That is true. And all you did in this was at the direction and request of E. Howard Hunt. Yes, except that uh, 
I personally was convinced at the time, and I am today too, that what I did at that time was correct. And Mr. E. Howard Hunt told you this was national security you were working on and it was above FBI and CIA. That is correct. Had Mr. Hunt told you to keep silent, would you have kept silent and not told us about it? Had Mr. Hunt told me to keep silent yeah. in, what, in what, sir? If he had told you to keep silent, would you have kept silent and not told us that he told you to keep silent? <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that's a very confusing statement, sir. <laughs> but, okay, any other uh, questions? If not, uh, witnesses. Excuse, thank you, Mr. Parker, for your thank testimony. You, uh, Be, uh, excuse He's excused. Wait, wait. Did you have something funny you want to say? Uh, yes, sir. I think it is only fair, uh, before I leave here, to say that I am part of a team of men on, of whom I am very proud. We are not criminal elements uh, that the word, as a newspaper recently said, we are the world's best known burglars, the, the, the word burglar we'll have to live with, uh, that we resent very emotionally uh, the word that we were hired. That there was no need to buy our silence. We are not for sale. Gordon Liddy was the burglar patriot who refused to talk, who once practiced self-discipline by eating a rat, and who gave some pause to those for whom he worked. I simply put my hand on Mr. Liddy's uh, shoulder and he asked me to remove it and uh, indicated that if I didn't, uh, serious consequences could uh, occur. Could, was uh, he more specific than serious consequences? Well, he indicated he would kill me, but uh, I want to make a, I want to make it clear that I did not, I don't regard that, and I do not now regard that as a specific threat. It was simply Mr. Liddy's mannerism. <laughs> After the break-in, there was a rush of events in the White House. And those events were seen one way by the president and his top lieutenants, Ehrlichman and Haldeman, and quite another way by those who worked for them. When did you first begin planning the cover-up? Oh, I think there was no question that the cover-up began that Saturday when we realized there was a break-in. I don't think there was ever any discussion that there wouldn't be a cover-up. 